day number two of retirement and here we are getting ready to start the Blue Ridge Parkway. 460 miles of scenic views. We can't wait to get started this. We wanted to do it a long time, so here we go. Well, we didn't get too far. We are at the Humpback Rock Visitor Center. We are hungry. We started out this morning, didn't get anything to eat, so anyway, we're kind of kind of combined a breakfast and a lunch here, have a brunch. I've cooked up some sausage and eggs and we're gonna put it in tortillas and Nancy ran in the Visitor Center to get our um, passport stamped. And um, anyway, we're gonna sit down here and eat. Take a look at this, looks pretty good. We had to stop once again. We're not getting very far very fast because the views are spectacular. So here we are at the 20 minute cliff. Take a look. We're just looking at this town below. We're not sure what the name of it is, but I gotta tell you what I just said. So we're riding along and I look on uh, Ed's side and you can see the valley and I look off this side and I said, it's like we're riding along a ridge. Blue Ridge Parkway. At mile marker 63, you come along and you find this gem of a nugget on the side of the road. So we are just before the James River uh, Information Visitor Center, you might say. Beautiful waterfalls down here and just a nice walk hear, by the can creek. Can you hear it? We're gonna take you up and, and show you those waterfalls. And they have like these little steppy stony things and Ed's gonna walk across it <laughs> and take you with them. Oh, okay, I'll give it a try. Okay, here's the stepping stones Nancy's talking about. She wants me to give it a shot. I'm gonna go on those and go to the other side of the creek unless I fall in first. Oh, what a beautiful area up here. So down here is those stepping stones how that uh, I just walk across, you can see, you go across the creek there. And uh, yeah, I got a little bit wet on my foot. I <laughs> one of those rocks I slipped off of, but you know, I survived. Still got my pride intact too. So up there's the waterfall. We're gonna walk across there a little bit, but wow, what a beautiful stop. And man, we we're glad we pulled in here. and had our brunch yeah, here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, this is gorgeous. So this is a dam they've got on the river here. Uh, this nice uh, stone wall, it's pretty cool. We just seen another couple here sitting here eating their right. lunch. What a great spot. Uh, nice little area right before the James River Visitor Center. I'd pull off there and take a look at it. Mile marker 63. Wow, this is super peaceful, so. Um, this is above me is the parkway they got a bridge uh, that goes across the james river here and then hanging below that they have a suspension walkway as you can see that uh, you can walk down um, on the other side here they've got a canal interpretive center now if you followed our channel before you've seen that we've we've done a lot of these in uh, indiana where we've uh, traced the canals and everything so they also had a canal that ran across uh, alongside the James River here. So I think I'm going to walk down there and uh, take a look at that. I got my trusty sidekick Herky with me. 
uh, he's wanting to take a walk. So, you know, here at the James River Visitor Center, they've got the building closed, which is just a shame. I mean, I just wish it was open and you could, you know, learn more about the area through the visitor centers. But anyway, uh, we're making the best of it. We're going to walk across this area and take a look at these canals down here. So I'm right here alongside the lock. This is a 15 foot lock. So uh, what it done is it raised uh, the boats up about 15 feet into the, the river there, which they had dug into a canal. Now the canal systems in the United States were very short lived. This one was in 1850, operated from 1850 to 1880. And that's pretty, pretty typical for most of the canals that I've found, uh, you know, across Indiana and some of the other places I've been. Uh, the reason for that being is the fact that, uh, you know, the railways came in and pretty much uh, made the canals obsolete. It never was a very efficient uh, mode of transportation, but it's all they had back in the day. So it played an important part in building our country, but only for a short period of time. Uh, this one's right along the James River, and um, it's pretty neat to look at and think about what took place here back in the 1800s. This is amazing. 2,700 feet below me is Arnold Valley. So I'm sitting up here on top of this rock. Oh man, the views are beautiful. But we just had to stop here once we've seen this and, uh, and show you guys. Uh, the valley below, you can see all the farms and everything. It's just, it's just really awesome. Uh, Nancy's here, she's just right below me. She did not want to get up on this rock. But uh, anyway. Wow, take a look below. We made it here to Peaks of Otter and we are stretching our legs and looking at this gorgeous lake. And I got our sticker. Also here they have a lodge and a restaurant, a bar, a gift shop. It's a great stop. Just in case you're wondering, Peaks of Otter is at mile marker 80, right here, well, a little past 80, what do you think, 82 probably? Anyway, and so I have like the time of day we got here, what time we started, what time we got here, just for our own information, not that it matters, but anyway, there it is. So now we're gonna turn our page and we're gonna keep on going. We're here at Harvey's Knob Overlook, and um, man, you can just see forever. I mean, I know I say this at every time we stop, but the overlooks are amazing. I mean, that's one of the things you want to do on this drive, right, is get out as much as possible. You cannot stop at every one of these, but I think it's really cool. If you look out through here, you can see that, um, you know, that people got their hay stacked up. You can see the red roofs of barns. And uh, it's just really quiet here. There's some uh, gentlemen down there that are bird watching, looking at some hawks flying over the fields below. Uh, but it's it's really neat. We decided to get out here a minute and take a walk, look around. I just want to show you. So Harvey's Overlook. Amazing these views and you know you sit back and think about how blessed we are to live in a country that's so beautiful and you know has these things for us to enjoy where we could take a scenic drive down a road and look at beautiful views like this I don't want to take this for granted I mean this is this is unique and uh, I've been a lot of places in the world and I've seen a lot of cool stuff but uh, just something about the beauty of Blue Ridge Parkway is quiet drive in the country, just relaxing and soothing for the soul. He got into some burrs today <laughs> and we had to cut his hair. Oh my goodness, all around his face looks ridiculous, but um, 
those burrs were so thick we couldn't get them out so Herky what happened to your cute little face there <laughs> Hey, can you see us? We had a detour, so we had to get off the parkway, and it was a big mess. A bee came in the window, stuck me on the earlobe. Anyway, we're back on the trace. <laughs> we are in... Rocky... Knob. Knob. Campground. Campground. We got a site. We just met a fellow runawayer, uh, Connie Pope. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she has a cool camp. So, we are gonna end this and get some dinner and go to bed. Little Green Acres. We'll catch you next time. Bye now. Good morning. We are ready for day two on the Blue Ridge Parkway. And Herky's all clipped in. He's, he's a little wet because it's raining and it's foggy, but that's okay because we're just gonna go over here to the Mayberry Trading Post. We had a good night here at the Rocky Knob Campground and uh, we're ready to get started today, but it is, uh, it's pretty foggy and pretty rainy right now. Not sure how much we see. And look, do you see my ear is all swollen from my bee sting yesterday? Ed says he can't tell, but uh, I think I can tell that it's a little swollen. What a day yesterday. And it's itchy, ooh. Hey, we're gonna get on the road. Let's go. Before we get going, let me just mention that um, every so often on the parkway, they've got these campgrounds. Uh, we have actually spent $20 uh, for a site. You know, it's dry camping. There's no uh, electricity or anything like that. But they do have uh, shower bathhouses, no showers. Um, some of them have shower houses at the visitor center because we're running along the Appalachian Trail here and you can pay like three bucks for it. But um, anyway, there's just, um, I don't know, probably 50 sites here or so. And uh, you can see there's other people that are here doing the parkway just like us. Um, we actually ran into some other runaway folks here uh, this weekend here at the park. So it was, it, was, um, it was fun talking to them last night. So I just want to show you right before we got on the road here, you can camp right along the parkway um, for like $20. So, all right, I'm going to give you found a place here with no fog so we're at the Mabry Mill I pulled in the parking lot really quick let me show you what I got going on over here so before I go on these trips uh, we fry up some sausage and we freeze that and everything so what I'm gonna do is scramble some eggs in here some sausage and we got some tortilla so we're gonna wrap those up and uh, while we wait for the fog to burn off, this is what we're going to do. We're just going to cook some breakfast here in the parking lot at the Mabry Mill. I think that's the um, visitor center right here alongside the parkway. So, all right, I'm going to get busy. We'll catch up with you in a minute. The family that gave us the house, so it was about 150 years old. The Mabry Mill was uh, unique in that it had a flume that caught the flow from two different streams and then combined it into one. So as you see up here, they got one stream and then behind me is another stream. Um, so this mill operated to the mid 30s, but interestingly enough, um, later on, Ed Mabry's, uh, he became ill and his wife decided that uh, she would change the mill to an engine powered. So she bought a gas engine and continued operation till the mid 30s, so pretty interesting.
So we're at the mill. They say that this is the most photographic spot on the parkway. In fact, we are interrupting a man who is trying to take pictures right so now. So we're going to cut this short. <laughs> say, hun, they said that um, when this gentleman died, he, he, his wife ran the mill um, by herself. So do you think you can run a grist mill? No. <laughs> no, not gonna happen. <laughs> beautiful. I'm not area. even gonna pull a trailer by myself. <laughs> this is a beautiful area. We're gonna keep walking around. I just wanna take you down here and show you. And look, the fog has lifted. Here we go. Just a short walk from the mill, actual mill. They have um, a restaurant here. Uh, it's called Mabry Mill Restaurant, and uh, there's a craft store in there. Uh, unfortunately, I forgot my mask back of the van, so I can't go in, but man, from out here, those pancakes smell amazing. Uh, but you know, it's probably not as good as those tortilla scrambled egg and sausage that I had on the back of the runaway camper. No way you can top that. Anyway, um, Nancy's gonna run in there really quick and then we're gonna get back on the parkway because the fog is burned off and we're ready to go. At mile post 180, if you are headed south, look to the left because you will see Mayberry Trading Post. We're gonna go inside and check it out. Herky's in the fan because he, we don't want him to get muddy. Can you hear him? He is having an absolute fit. Yeah. So he's going to sit this one out. This is Mayberry, Virginia that we are in. And look at this old post office. But now there's a mailbox outside. But look at this. Their names. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Apple butter? Really? You good? Well, we've been practicing for about 150 years. Well, then it must be good. <laughs> we may have to try that, honey. <laughs> oh, look at this. Wow, that was a great stop. And I got some um, apple butter that her family makes and for like a hundred years, right? Mm -hmm. So they should know what they're doing. So this should be really good. And I got Ed a book on bluegrass songbook. Cause you know, Ed plays the upright things. Oh, I haven't played in a while. <laughs> yeah, so, but he's good. Anyway, it was a good stop. Well, we had some connections there. They filmed part of Mayberry Man here. And uh, one of the young men that grew up in our church, uh, Brett Marvel is starring in Mayberry Man, the movie. And so it was kind of fun just to um, have a little connection with the folks here at Mayberry. So we're going to get back on the road. Here we go. Wow, so we stopped here at the Groundhog Overlook. Uh, and they got this display of a forest service tower uh, it was built uh, out of logs and that so pretty cool the other thing i think is interesting here is they've got a display of several different types of split rail fences and um, you know, i didn't realize there's more than one type but they show different ways of construction and that so it's a pretty nice interpretive stop and wow the views are beautiful too so I think what I'll do is walk up the top of this uh, little tower they got here. I think you'll find it interesting. So it's really hard to narrate in here. Um, in the music center, they have a really nice display of different, um, mu you know, bluegrass music and the music of the area. They've got some shape note singing and some other types of music. Um, it's really fun. The hard part is, you gotta talk really fast so I don't get a copyright strike. But um, yeah, this is excellent done. It's just done with excellence. I really, really enjoyed it. And, um, 
you know, the Music Center on the Bluegrass, the Blue Ridge Parkway is, you know, just a, a must stop. So make sure you stop in here and see this. Um, can't describe it. Alrighty, I just want to walk down here and show you the, the amphitheater here at the Blue Ridge Parkway uh, Music Center. Uh, they've really got this set up nice here now. There's no concerts this weekend, but uh, right now they've uh, got the small venue going on up in the visitor center that you've seen, and they also have the museum there. It's really cool. This is well done, and uh, we're really enjoying it, but I thought I'd hike down here to the amphitheater show you that uh, some big name players have played here before and uh, can you imagine just coming here and setting your lawn chair up on the grass and listening to bluegrass music all day oh man wouldn't that be exciting all righty let's take a look at this place we forgot to end this video again so we are in bed here at raccoon holler campground we just had some nice hot showers and we are calling it a night oh wow a shower felt good today what a great day on the parkway i hope you enjoyed it stay tuned for more i think you really enjoy as we travel down the parkway at mile marker 80 if you are headed 180 yeah. At mile post 180, if you look to your left, if you're headed south, <laughs> this reminds me of the mailman in. Uh, yeah. Funny farm. Funny farm. We had a good time here last night. We just spent the night here at. Um, the Rocky Top. So we had a good night here at the Rocky Mound. We had a good night here at the Rocky Knob. We had a good night here at the Rocky Knob Campground, uh, right next to the Rocky Knob Visitor Center on the Bluegrass. <laughs> yeah. We had a good night here at the Rocky Knob Campground. Let's do it like this. There we go. Okay, that's good. Can you see you? I don't know. Yeah. Hang on. Day number two. Oh, hang on a second. I was looking at that. Day number two of retirement, and here we are getting ready to start the Blue Ridge Parkway. 460 miles of scenic views. We cannot wait to do this. We've wanted to do this a long time.